Okay, so our second speaker is Virginia Dignam. Virginia is a professor at the Faculty of Technology, Policy, and Management at Delft University. Her background is in AI research, um, and she's done a lot of important work over the years on agent-based models of organizations and the dynamic aspects of organizations and how all that plays out in an AI context. She's now um, leading some important grants in, um, in Europe on design and values with particular reference to AI, and she's um, co-chair of the European AI Conference this year. Um, today, Virginia will be speaking about on moral decisions by autonomous systems. Please welcome Virginia Diggum. Good morning, thank you for your uh, introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here and to be able to discuss and present the work we have been doing in Delft and with some other colleagues in Europe on the uh, moral decisions by autonomous systems, but more generally on uh, responsible AI. And uh, see this thing works. Just a second. No, I lost it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so uh, our work is not so much on the long-term consequence of AI, but on the very uh, short term and the decisions that systems are already doing now. And like Pedro Domingo said some time ago, uh, Machines are very stupid now, and they're already taking a lot of decisions for us. So how can we make sure that those decisions that they are making are uh, uh, beneficial and uh, understand our, um, how are we dealing with those decisions? Who determines which, who is right and wrong? What is right and wrong? And how should, uh, which, which decisions should the machines be taking, and which decisions should we not uh, want the machines to be taking. And moreover, what is our role as users, as owners, as developers, and as society in general on the decisions that machines can or not be taking? Uh, the work we do is basically uh, considering, uh, we take two directions in the considering the, social, uh, implica the ethical and social implications of artificial intelligence as it integrates our lives now uh, and uh, changes and uh, in, uh, enters the uh, traditional systems that we are uh, us uh, used to uh, deal with. Uh, we look at two different aspects. In one end, the integration of ethical decisions into the machines themselves, and on the other hand, on the what we call the research integrity and the, um, the, our role as designers of the systems and our role in the process of designing those systems, which is where we look at uh, the design for values approach. Uh, I will talk briefly about both aspects, starting by the ethics by design or the responsibility by design. And like I say, that is about uh, how do ethics take a role and uh, have a role in problem solving on the decision making and on accountability that systems should or should not have. Uh, Taking a general uh, approach to artificial intelligence, we, I'm, I'm like uh, David said, I'm a, I have a background on autonomous systems, but uh, most of us will agree that an artificial intelligence system will have these three aspects, adaptability or learning, interaction, and uh, autonomy. And um, uh, if we want these systems to be somehow have a sense of responsibility of the ethical awareness of what they are doing, we uh, contend that we should extend this traditional view of an intelligent system with a few more autonomy we should and should take into account the responsibility and uh, any of you like me who is a parent know that that's one of the main issues of educating children is to learning them to have the autonomy and taking the responsibility for their decisions. On the uh, accountability and being able to explain how to, what you did and how uh, that uh, uh, s uh, decisions took uh, taken place in the interactions is another aspect which we should look at. And finally, uh, on learning and adaptability, we should look at the transparency of what we're doing. So it is about 
the deciding, the explanation and the, the inspection of the systems that we have. Uh, considering the decisions of and respons taking responsibility for decisions, uh, there is a lot of work, and uh, it has been mentioned both by David and by Nick already, on the all uh, moral dilemmas and the all issues that uh, uh, at this moment uh, cars should or not be driving over uh, old ladies or uh, fat people or young people or whatever. It's not so much uh, my issue here, but uh, it is a very simple and very visual and a, an example that uh, people understand and can um, relate to very easily. So it's an example which we, we use as a pedagogical example, let's say. So what we want to look at is uh, the, the, this dilemma, uh, uh, not necessarily the trolley dilemma in itself, but moral decisions are, uh, per definition, imply a lot of dilemma because there is not a one right solution and you have to decide between two less optimal solutions and machines have to do those decisions as well. So uh, what we have uh, looking at is that it is not just about letting the machines uh, deciding and learning how to take the decisions on such a moral uh, dilemma of the trolley, who should you kill or should not kill on the cars. But it's very, very much, there, there, are more there are more options than this one, so we should look at different uh, options on it. So if we take into consideration both who is taking the decision in itself and how those decisions are taking, we come up with four possible trolley dilemmas uh, scenarios of which this one is what is being discussed very much. The machine itself, internally to the machine, the decision should be made. And uh, the machine deliberates and takes into account whatever information it has from the environment to take that decision. But we contend that there are other ways to do it. The simplest one, of course, is to go back to the traditional uh, trolley dilemma. Uh, the humans are there, now humans are in the loop, and in many cases it's the best uh, decision for the machine to tell, I don't know, sorry, and in this case you decide, I'm not the one who is going to decide because I, I cannot choose between the two different situations. In this case, of course, if the human is in the loop, then we have to take into account the issue of uh, shared awareness, how uh, is the machine able to alert the use the user or the person uh, to, who is going to decide to what uh, is the situation at this moment and now uh, be ensuring that the user is uh, keeping aware of the decisions and of the situations and not just uh, disconnect and let the machine go and do whatever it is and wake up at a certain moment and have to take a decision without having the, the all full information about the, the situation. So, uh, situation awareness and shared awareness is a very important issue here, which we uh, can do much more than what uh, is there already. Of course, the other one is the regulation one, is about uh, creating the either physical or regulatory or uh, governatory um, uh, infrastructures which take the, the decision or make sure that there is no decision to be taken. Uh, one example I give my students very often is that if you go to the metro, there are those uh, huge uh, doors, uh, metal doors, which only open when you have the ticket. So you don't have any more to do, deliberate yourself whether I should buy a ticket or I should try to ride the train without uh, paying the ticket because the whole infrastructure doesn't allow you to get to the train without the ticket. So those kind of infrastructures also regulatory or um, govern 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 governance infrastructures are also ways to deal with uh, moral decisions and then the decision is uh, outside in the uh, outside the, the system is doing it and of course the last one is the random one okay we just take a decision and we'll see what uh, what happens and we we can guarantee that it's random so i'm not to blame i had no information whatsoever i just did the first thing which uh, got to me and uh, of course then i'm always uh, off the hook let's say uh, whether this is the most accountable and the most moral decision uh, we can discuss but it's a, a way to do, deal with decisions by uh, machines so this Concerning responsibility, now if you look at accountability, there has been quite a lot of work in either which people say that uh, we, when we work with machines, uh, you uh, give machines, and there is a lot of work on that, uh, that they uh, you give the machine the same kind of feeling of 
partner or teamwork or agency as you do to people. But in other end, there have been quite a lot of experiments also with the trolley example, in which it shows that people expect the machine to take the more rational or the more utilitarian decision than the person. So while people expect from each other in such a trolley problem that you shouldn't take the decision of actively switch the lever to uh, kill or not kill someone. In the case of if it's a machine which is taking the decision, uh, people expect them more to uh, take the decision in which more lives are sa saved. So it has a lot to do in this case uh, when the machine does take a decision or, uh, by itself about how to explain and how to take that explanation at a level that the person understand, and that the, it's not just a very technical and very uh, deep neural network uh, chain of events which uh, no one can understand, but to make those explanations in a way that uh, uh, people can understand. Uh, we as persons ourselves uh, happen very often to make those decisions not, or those, uh, the explanations we give are very often created a posteriori by creating a kind of a chain of events which are plausible for the actions that we took. Uh, whether we want uh, machines to uh, use those same social heuristics as we as people are doing is something we also should look at. at. And as we talk about accountability, one other issue and uh, from the research that I do, which is a lot on uh, persuasive systems, and those systems, they somehow, not at all like this, but somehow tend to have some human-like characteristics. That's another issue which is important on accountability. The more human-like the system is and the more human-like the system pretends or aims that make you believe that it is, the more the accountability that system should take for explaining what uh, it is uh, uh, doing. This uh, uh, image here down of the old lady and Alice is from a, a documentary done for the Dutch TV one or two years ago, in which they uh, had that Alice, the robot, live, live with some people in an elderly home, and Alice really, uh, people really uh, engaged and become big friends with Alice, and they would, they would show the pictures of their children or of their youth to Alice and engaged with Alice in a very uh, natural way. And they didn't knew that Alice was not a real robot in the sense that it was taking uh, decisions itself, but was a whole Wizard of Oz experiment. So this kind of uh, uh, dealing with the human-like and especially with the vulnerable users, it has a lot to, uh, for us to be accountable for as the way to uh, how we uh, want these systems to uh, explain themselves or to be uh, dealt with and be understood by the, their users. Which brings me to the transparency issue, which uh, has a lot to do about the, we cannot expect the systems and especially machine learning systems to uh, learn and to know it all right away at once and being uh, fully um, able to uh, take decisions uh, from the very first beginning. As we don't expect our uh, drivers when they start the driving to be fully uh, understanding of the traffic laws and whatever, and in many country, countries you use those L plates to indicate, I'm just learning and uh, excuse me for the mistakes I might, uh, I might make. Uh, there is that kind of issues. We can also look at that and make it aware, uh, the, give the awareness and the explanation to people that the system is just learning. It's not yet a full-fledged system. Uh, next to that, I think one of the most important issues is to look or creating a a new focus on the old machine learning algorithms, which is not so much to focus on the performance to the uh, functional uh, abilities of that system, but to use the feedback loops also to learn some moral principles to those systems in which guide the ways that systems will learn and will evolve from where they uh, come from. seems I still have some time. <laughs> okay. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of the learning has to do with the data that we give these systems. Uh, the systems uh, 
can be uh, become sufficient good to learn from their data, but on the other end, there is a lot of uh, uh, evidence and a lot of studies which show that any system which is learning based on data which is generated by us, as people, as societies, will necessarily take, uh, take into the learning the bias that we have ourselves. And we, uh, if we don't make that explicit and we don't really assume that those issues are there, then uh, it makes it very uh, and, uh, uh, and irresponsible, let's say, to have the systems uh, taking decisions without that explicitly making the the learning and the bias, the and assuming that the bias are there. So, uh, and another issue which I would like to look at is the ownership. So these systems are typically owned by corporations, and those corporations have their own interests as well and their own biases, which uh, are also not explicitly put into the learning uh, and the development of the systems, which then leads me to the other side of my talk, which would be about, which is about the design for value, so about our own ethical and uh, moral responsibility as designers, as users, as owners of these systems, and uh, which is, of course, here in the, the New York University, there is a long tradition of design for values. Uh, uh, research. In Delft, we also have uh, quite some work uh, which we do on that. And the, sorry, five minutes, yes, I'm almost there. And it's like I say about our, the awareness of our role. And as we do that, then one of the main issues is to understand which are the values, the moral values which are we building or we are taking into uh, consideration in the design and in the systems that we are building. Who are, from who those values come, uh, which of those values are important? And is it a, a question of that the system should follow those values, must follow those values, or could follow those values? So that's also some issues which we don't really have looked much at. It, in a simple uh, uh, project that some of my students have done, we have looked at argument online deliberation uh, systems in which people, uh, you can get like what if you want, the social acceptance about a certain uh, topic. And then we ask those same people who uh, agree on the social acceptance of smoking or not smoking or uh, selling uh, uh, fried food in the university uh, restaurant, all kinds of stuff on political issues. We ask them uh, after they have done the social acceptance of what we think it's as a democratic, uh, de democratically chose decision. We ask them to look at the moral acceptability of those decisions in terms of fairness, in terms of harm, in terms of uh, uh, ownership, in terms of authority, and the results get quite different. So things which we, and we have seen that again and again also in the recent cases of referendums all over the world, that what we vote as a majority, we think that this is the best solution, is in most cases against our own principles of the same groups which uh, vote for it, if you take their moral uh, acceptability. So we are doing quite a lot of work in this uh, putting, br bringing together and aligning the moral uh, acceptability and the social acceptance. But of course, then we get very quickly into the moral overload. Uh, we want too many things at the same time which are incompatible. Uh, we want sustainability and the, the leading to having uh, natural gas buses which then uh, are not as safe as we would like them to have. So that we want to have both or we want to have uh, efficient energy use, but then those smart meters uh, leads us to uh, less privacy and uh, less um, uh, security for the owners of those things. So how to deal with the, the moral overload in these cases is also an issue which requires a lot more work than uh, what has been done so far. Uh, which leads me then to the, leading a bit to what uh, Nick also has, the issue of governance. And there is a lot of discussion on shall we regulate first or shall we 
allow for uh, all developments in all kinds of directions to go. And what comes first? Should we first, uh, it's easier to uh, f ask forgiveness than to ask permission. It's one of the things which you use, uh, which you hear very often. But in very much in line with what Nick says, actually those two lines should go together. It's not like we should first regulate and then develop, or first develop and then regulate. No, we should really take both paths into account at the same time and integrating them together uh, uh, as, um, as one. So I'm getting to the end of my talk in which basically the issue is the, as we get into uh, the issue of responsibility by artificial intelligence systems, it's not so much just the responsibility by the systems or about the systems, but actually we are the ones who are responsible. Thank you. Uh, hi, I, I wanted to know if there was any thoughts um, about these kinds of developments in terms of education, um, like educating the machines. Uh, we don't raise children in school thinking, how are we going to make sure that we can have total control over them or that they don't do, do what we don't want them to do? Right? Uh, uh, but I don't see any sort of educational. Yes, but yeah. we, we raise children to be responsible for what decisions they take, and that's kind of the place that I would like to make. So if you want to do it, sorry. Uh, we raise children to learn how to be responsible for the decisions they take. Not that we want to control them, but we want them to be self-responsible for what they are. And that's very much what I claim that we should learn machines to, raise machines to do. And it's not something which should, we should accept or expect to be automatically and uh, at the first version of that machine that it will be fully responsible for what it does. But we should create the, the sandboxes or the safe environments in which the machines can learn about taking their own responsibility without being right away in the uh, positions in which they have to take the life or death uh, decisions. Hi, my name is Don. My question is, you're um, saying that the interface from human beings and telling the computers or the artificial intelligence what is good and what is bad in choices maybe in medical decisions. Um, for children, for example, you tell someone, it, the child, it's good or it's bad, eventually they will want to investigate the opposite of what you've told them. And how could you ensure that the artificial intelligence would not want to investigate that, even though it's been told in an algorithm that, you know, this is the good portion that you should be focusing on? That's a very interesting question. Uh, yes, that is a risk. Uh, I think that, like I say, if you do have some uh, experimental uh, sandbox environments where machines can experiment before they really are uh, interacting in a full-fledged uh, uh, real-world environment, that would be the place where we could let machines experiment with what is the opposite. Uh, but of course, uh, like I say, at the end of the day, we are the ones who are responsible. We make those machines, so if we let them explore or we create the possibilities for machine to explore and also to explore the, the wrong or the bad uh, paths, we should also take into account uh, probably in uh, governance and in uh, um, uh, regulation to deal about, uh, to, to deal with the consequences for who uh, and for whom and how to deal with the consequences of uh, uh, wrong decisions by machines. Hi. Um, 
So there, up till now, it seems as if there's two separate issues that be, being, are being discussed, namely how to make machines moral, and on the other hand, how should we treat machines morally? But shouldn't they be very closely connected as they are with human beings, namely, why do we behave morally? Because it gives our lives meaning. Mm -hmm. And we also expect to be treated in a moral way. So for machines, wouldn't that hold as well? Once we start treating them in a certain manner, they might also be inclined to treat us in a certain manner. Yeah. I think that uh, connects also to what Nick was saying about uh, uh, comparing machines and mice. And indeed, uh, I don't really know where the, that experience, experience comes from, but there was a few months ago some uh, experience, uh, experiments going on on which you, sh you showed people uh, films of people kicking, kicking uh, uh, robot dogs and uh, how people felt outraged by the feeling that they were mistreating those robots because you could not really just go and kick the robot, poor robot, so you really give the robot some... Uh, uh, anthropological or some uh, feeling of agency and of being an uh, entity in itself with feelings or with uh, the right to be treated uh, uh, morally. Uh, that's indeed a very important aspect, which I think it has been uh, very uh, little uh, researched uh, so far. But definitely it is a, an issue to consider and to give machines the feeling of being a moral being itself and use that as a basis for the decisions that the machine would take in terms of uh, treating other, others also morally or not. Hi, uh, I'm Sasha. Uh, so uh, I have a question about, um, so I, uh, as humans, like we've come up with a set of constructs to uh, discourage like antisocial behavior in humans or to punish antisocial behavior, such as, you know, like social alienation or like, I don't know, jail time, things like that. So should there be such a set of constructs, equivalent constructs for AI systems? And if there should be, then what would that be to discourage mm -hmm. a behavior that is yeah. Yes, we Answer. should definitely uh, build into the feedback, feedback loops and reinforcement loops of the learning capabilities of machines, the moral uh, aspects, so uh, to encourage or discourage uh, moral, uh, to encourage moral behavior and discourage immoral behavior, that it's definitely something which should be taken as much into account uh, into the feedback loops and the, 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 the learning algorithms of uh, systems as much as at uh, optimal identifying of the correct uh, op uh, decision in terms of the functional aspects of it. So that's one of the things we should do. How we are going to uh, build those moral uh, features into the learning algorithms, I uh, wouldn't uh, really know myself, but I believe there are people in the room who probably have much more to say about it uh, tomorrow, I believe, Stuart. <laughs> so there are work done on that, not by me. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.